Good morning. It is 856. I'm Tanya Babbage. Today, Cubs pitchers and catchers report for spring training in Mesa, Arizona. Uncertainty is surrounding the training facility, and there's talk of the Cubs potentially parting ways with third baseman Chris Bryant. Cubs president Theo Epstein holds a press conference later today to talk about it. Dion Miller will be live from Mesa throughout the day, bringing us all those details. Next on ABC 7, it's live with Kelly and Ryan, followed by The View and Eyewitness News at 11. Then GMA3, Strahan, Sarah, and Kiki. And okay, I'll Shabu feed you guys. Careful of my plugs. Let me put this away. I'll feed you guys and then I get a call. And then I'm going to go back to I did something. I don't know what I did. Yep, I've knocked those. I gotta be careful. Okay, let me go potty and then I'll get you too.
saw him yesterday. Uh, he was, for the staff photo, he was, uh, we all lined up here, and Mark was there. In a very Go ahead, Nate, Chuba. <laughs> you got to find my remote. Okay, Sheba, you don't want to eat today? I'll watch it. It's okay, Sheba. Hello. Hello, I feel pesty. No, I just, I'm calling you again. <laughs> oh, I thought you said testy, like T-E-S. <laughs> oh, no, pesty, like I'm pestering you. you does, that, does that include pestering me in my dreams? Because I dreamed that we were at uh, Midwest and we were checking out the uh, sizes of the steel. And was it a good, was it a good dream or were the sizes wrong? <laughs> uh, it was, it was a draw. It, you know, it, it ended before it, it ended before it uh, even started. Oh. That's funny. That's funny. Okay, no, I'm not going to check out the steel with you, Mark. You'll have to do that one on your own. <laughs> okay, it, it, it was something about 9 times 5 is 45. I, that, 9 that, times 5 is 45, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I can't get into uh, TLA Forms Designer because I think the server is down, so I notified I'm you. I'm in. You're in. Let me see. Uh, am, can you not get in if I'm in? Uh, let me try it now. Okay, I'm in now, so. Okay. Maybe Gary sent a uh, email. I just got in, like, maybe two minutes ago. I ran to the ladies' room before I called you because otherwise, <laughs> you know how I get. I gotta go, you know what I mean? So yeah. anyway, that I got in and then I ran to the ladies' room and called you. Anyway. Did you find out about the emailing? Um, you mean from, you know, um... You the bill, yeah, the emailing of the bill of ladings. Remember how we found that it was all commented out? Yeah, uh, no, I... I, I did. Uh, you did? What, what? What's the scoop? What's the scoop? The scoop is we email it through T.L. Ashford, and I can walk you to it. Okay. Good I'm night. in an invoice. I should have, I should have known that. Ah, you know what? That's okay. Come on, Mark. Can I feel good about helping you for once? Oh yeah, you can. You know, but uh, I, I, you know, it's like uh, you know, I'm I'm supposed to be the Mr. TLA forms. Expert. Well, no, but I just went through all the videos. You went through the videos before you were looking for things. Yes. I after we had talked and we couldn't figure out why that was all commented out. Yeah. There were there's a video on it, but open one of the invoices or the bill lading. I don't care which. I'm gonna show it to you, and then you could look at the videos if you need to. Uh, on the on the system or on the, or on TL Ashford. TL Ashford. Okay. I just feel good. I can help you because <laughs> you're always helping me. Let's see. So uh, so open up invoice sample form. Well, or go to the real one. I mean, as long as you don't say no, go to the real one because it might not be. She might not have done it to the sample. Go to either the invoice or the bill lading. I'm in one of the invoices only because I wanted to make sure I could figure it out before I called you. Twist. Wait, wait. I, I... Stop it. Be nice. Okay, 
sorry, wait, wait, wait. You, you said go to the go to one of the invoices on Tail Asher. The only thing I'm seeing is uh, is the uh, design. I don't, I'm not seeing the. I'm not seeing what you're seeing. Let me. Let me. Uh, okay. Why don't you get on my computer? Yeah, because I'm. And I think you're going to know exactly what I'm, I'm, I'm probably not wording it correctly, but you're going to know exactly what I'm trying to ask you to do. <laughs> I'm probably not saying it right. All right. Let me, uh... okay. As soon as you see what I tell you, I want you to do, you're going to be like, oh, okay. Now I know what you wanted. Okay, I see now. Okay, I went into the P I N V R E G. I don't know why there's an N L and there's another letter one, but I they're both the same. Okay. And you know it says T L S for document invoices. You see all that, so you know where I'm at, right? I see the form. Okay, uh, but but before before you got to this. Uh, you just entered the form name, or I what? Well, I clicked on it. I did file, open, and clicked on P I N V one. Okay, wait. Let's close it. I'll start over. Because I was going to say, how come you, how come you saw that and I didn't? Do you wish to save? No. Okay. From here, I went to file. Yep. I went to open. Mm hmm. And then I went to the invoice one. Oh, 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 okay. Because you know what? I've I've been I've been clicking on the uh, green arrow icon. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I remember. Okay. So you I go guess. in different than I do. I, I've been doing it a certain way for so long. I, I guess. Uh, I guess those are for like just the recent ones that were open or. or I don't know, Mark, but that's why I threw you off because I was thinking one way and you're thinking another. Okay. So now I see it. Yes. Okay. Go into spool data. Mm -hmm. SQL configuration. Right. Look at this right here, email. Yes. Now, wait a minute. Edit. And you're going to be able to figure out how to do this for everything. Here's your custom SQL. Right. She's, uh, yeah, see? I knew you'd know as soon as I showed it to you. So, so yeah, because uh, you see those field names inside. Yep. Uh, greater than, less than. Yep. Th those are actually... Uh, uh, from from the program yep. that we put on the print file, so you got to have that there, and then uh, and then you, you're mapping that field. Uh, so, okay, so now you got your custom, your custom SQL. So you got um, yeah, but this is actually going out to CCC email. No, it's going to library contact. Right. The CC contact where the customer number is equal. And if it's got an E, meaning email, and the document type is an I, right. then it automatically sends an email to that address. Yeah. Now, what's really cool, which I like, I'm liking this more and more the more I'm jumping around. Um, advanced options. Um, email options. Look at this. You could put you put in the email, you put who it's from, mm -hmm. and then the subject is invoice, and it's put in the invoice number here. Then it says, see, please see attached invoice. Thank you for your business. Regards, whatever, whatever. Yeah. But this is going to print in the body of the invoice. Correct. Of the email. I'm so sorry. The body of the email. Right. Okay. So, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to remember why. I'm trying to remember why. Uh, see, we we have, we we would need an automatic uh, email for uh, production, and uh, okay, manual email for you know doing it from the uh, production reports. Uh, so okay, so from production. You would go in, and there's a, a code on here, and I can't remember where it's at. Um, ch -ch -ch, let me see if it's here. There's somewhere in here. First of all, let me tell you, because you're going to do the same thing. You're going to say, go to the contact. Yes. And you're going to say if it's email and it's production, but you also have to make sure it's customer steal only. Somehow, you got to tell it it's got to be customer steel only. Now, somewhere in here, 
for the invoice and the bill of lading, and I can't remember where it's at, but if you go through the videos, you'll find it. It says, oh, I know, I got them open. It says that if you do not find a contact, here is it, here, here's the one that does it. Let me get, uh, move up for you. Print. You print if there's no email address available. Right. Both the invoice and the bill of lading are doing that. That it prints if there's no email address available. Well, you wouldn't click that for production because we're not printing them if there's no email address available. I just wanted to point that out to you. So I think what you would do... I got to find it again. Is you would just put this in here and what it says, if you don't click that print, if there's no, it just doesn't do anything if it doesn't find an email address. It won't do a thing, which is what we want for production. Yes. The only thing is I don't know how to say in here because I'm afraid there's a customer that is going to have Feraloy and customer material at the same time. That's what I'm nervous about. So I'm assuming this SQL statement. Oh, I know how to do it, Mark. In this SQL statement, you could say if this word is customer, mm -hmm. then do the rest of the SQL statement. Because I, I was almost thinking of doing um, doing a join um, join between. Uh, customer contact, and I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, but you don't need to do a joint. Right, I, I won't. Have, I, yeah, I was thinking of doing that before you mentioned uh, material owner customer, so we would have to include uh, this, you know, this in, in, in the uh, SQL statement. So that's, right. That's a, good, that's a good start. Yeah. Okay, wait, let me... Which one is your... Per, let me close this. Close form. No, 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 no. <laughs> I say I do that every time. I'm so scared I'm going to mess something up on you. Uh, that would be... Which one gets emailed? There's two down here. Well, there, there, there may not even need to be two. But, okay, so this the first one is... A, I, Kim told me I had to have two, uh, two out there, one for auto and the other for manual. So. Oh, okay. That could be. Because if you do the manual, you don't want it to go out and check the contact. Right. So, um... Okay. So is this auto? A1 auto? Do you know? It's auto, yes. Okay, let's click on that one just for the heck of it. I'm busy. I got Mark. <laughs> That's right. Go away. <laughs> yeah, go away. Now when I'm helping Mark. I was just so excited that I found this last night. And I found it late in the day, and I'm like, I want to go over it again before I call Mark. Okay, here is the production report. Here's customer. E. You know what? I would put owner somewhere on this production report. As long as it's... Can't you put the owner on the production report, but don't show it? Um, yeah, you can hide it. Yeah. So I would put owner on the production report somewhere, but hide it. Yeah. And that way you could use that to say if you're going to email it or not. In the SQL down below where you say it needs to be emailed, it would first say if this field is customer, continue. But I'm wondering, uh, is, is that going to show up when they physically print it out? No, not if you say to hide it. Well, I, I mean, in, in, the, in the spool file, I mean, suppose they uh, want to print out the spool file, you know, from, from the 400. I think if you say to hide it, it won't. Okay. And you're only going to have this on the automatic one because that's the only one that's going to automatically email. Yeah, that, that's true. And you're not going to have it on the one that they manually print it. So I, I can probably... And actually, Mark, all you'd have to do is put a C or an F somewhere. You don't have to even label it. But no. if you put, like, at the end of um, 
yeah, at the end of the customer name, like one little field, a C or an F there, they wouldn't even know what that meant. But I don't think it's going to print if you hide it. It, it won't. It won't print on the form from CL Ashford if that. Yeah, I mean, if everything is going to go through here, then the, then that that shouldn't even. Matter. Yeah. Yeah. And the manual ones will go through here, but the other document. What did you do? Create this and then copy it so you could have one for manual and one for. Uh, yeah, you, you know what, uh, my, yeah, my intention was to, uh, create two, uh, spool files. Now, how, how is spool, okay, so this goes back to, um, this goes back to, uh, production. I, I still have to generate, uh, the spool file somewhere. Okay, can I tell you how production's being done now for automatic emailing? Yeah. We make a trigger. There's a trigger in e for the ET file, and the reason we did that was because we're giving them time to roll back production. If they roll it back right away, it goes out and flags the ET flat. You know what I mean? You know how invoices, as soon as it prints, they go. Bill ladings, as soon as they print, they go. I, I would somehow need to call the... I, I would somehow need to call uh, the CO, which eventually calls uh, the pro the COBOL yes. program built over the TR. Okay, that is in the 15-minute job already. Is it under, okay, is it under AAVZ, uh, <sighs> okay, the, you know, the end coil? That's under, that should be under the end coil. The uh, end coil program is creating a trigger. Yes. Um, and I know it's an user defined uh, action. And it's near the bottom because I, I, I've been looking at that. Okay, that is th that is where it's going to create an ET trigger. Yes. Here, let me just show you one. And it's PR. These are for emailing. All of these are for emailing. Mm hmm. Then the 15-minute job that runs for EDI goes out here and grabs this and sends it. Okay. So you need to then you need to go to the 15-minute job for EDI, and if you want, I could help you find it. I, but the reason we did that was because if they do end coil and they go, oh man, I messed up, I'm rolling it back. If they roll it back before the 15 minutes. It flags the record and it never gets sent to the customer. Okay, can can I show you what I'm looking at? I'm, sure. I'm going to switch screens. Yeah, uh, go right ahead. Because because I think I know I'm I think I'm at where you're talking about. Okay, I'm just glad I can help you, Mark. <laughs> oh, I, I'm 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 glad you're helping me too. Uh, well, because you're always helping me. <laughs> I, you know, I I should also be up to speed with uh, T L Asher. So, okay, so so I'm I'm. Let me uh, backtrack just a little bit. Okay, that made the trigger. I agree with you. Right. So, so I would have to go in here, retrieve check for email uh, and coil trigger, and it's. And it's, what it's doing is, um, I believe all the coils have to be skidded, so you don't have to change this program at all. Let this program make the trigger like it's doing. Okay. Don't change this program at all. Because it's going to make the trigger at end coil for sheets. For coils, it's going to make the trigger when all the coils are skidded because they we don't know the scale weight until a coil skidded. So would it, would it, come, would it come after this? Well, I have to put it, like, insert it. No, no, you're not going to do anything to this program at all. This program don't change. Okay, but I, I need to, I still need to create a spool file. No, not yet. Not yet. Not until the 15-minute job in EDI. Okay, so, so I don't save it. So, so I do nothing in this program. No. Let that program create its trigger. Okay. Um, you're going to have to, I can do it if you want, but I have to dig for that program because I always have trouble finding it because of the way it's marked. If you give me a minute, if you want to look at mine, you can. Yep. Work job SCDEF4 EDI. And I want to, whoops. 
Okay. So here's the name of the program. Let me let me just write. This is how I find it. X E D I R. And I'm going to show you why I have to do it this way in a minute. So because there's so many. I don't know where it's at is also my problem. X E D I R. No. So it's in I think it's a CL. I should have thought of that. X E D I R. No. Hmm. C D L. Maybe it is. See what I mean? I always have trouble finding it. Okay, this is it. All right, but now look at this. Here's a bunch of receivers. Yeah. So the receivers, I never know which one's the right one. Because whoever made copies of these did not mark them as old or something. I always mark them. I always say old. This one here you could tell is old. But anyway, it's one of these two sends. I don't know which one. So I always go into here. Wait, what is that? X E D I S. So I go into here and I do X E D I I S. It's that one. So let me write that down. I'm not. My memory's not as good as yours. S N D V. Now, am I doing this? Hold on. Let me see. I might be doing it in here at the end. Let me go. I know I did it at the bottom. No, I think it's in the I think it's in the send one. S N D. Let me go to the bottom. Uh, I'm gonna have to find it for you. Do you know the name of the other program? Uh the CL program? Yeah. Yeah, it's um here, let me go on mine. Uh, hold on. Uh, I, I'm still with you. I'm just going to move mine. No, that's okay. I'm still looking, Mark. I won't go any further until until you're back. Okay, so under the, T, under the TR uh, file, I got, a, it's a UP. Uh, I just call it, the, not the CL, I just call it <laughs> T-R-C-S-T-T-L, uh, T-L- a1, no, TL1, CL. Okay, I'm just going to search TRCST. Now, that's an old CL. That's not a new CL, right? No, that's a new CL. The old CL would, would have to be um, PRCST RPT CL. Okay, so it's not in there. CL, TR. CSTRPT. It's not in there. I gotta find it for you now. It's in. I don't think it's in mail. I really think it's in send. Okay, you know what? Hold on. Let me do a call. That one I already looked in. This is doing a whole bunch of EDI stuff. It's after all my EDI stuff, because I did not want to mess up any of the EDI stuff. Okay, so it's not in there, so that's let's go. But that's for, that's for incoming, right? Or no, it's for both. That PR. does both. No. This does sending. P-R-C-S-T. Okay. Clear, 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 clear. Okay, that does the divisions. These are 861s, 867s, 870s, so I'm still doing EDI, chemistry, EDI still, new core, Bethlehem. I'm getting close to the end, maybe, because the 846 is. Okay, let me see what's after that. Um, no. These are just EDI stuff, which I don't even know what they are. All right, so why did I not find it? Uh, you, know, you want to do a search, do a 25, do like a 25 at the beginning, and then do a search uh, for all the programs. It's, it's got to be in there somewhere. So like if you do a 25 and then F13, and, and then, okay, the, the CL is P-R-C-S-T. 
Uh, oh, I thought it was T R C S T. I was searching the wrong thing, Mark. Yeah. C okay. R okay. It's only a one. So I was searching the wrong thing. That's why. It is in the send. I was in the right place. I searched the wrong thing. Ah. Okay, it's this one, and then it's P-R-C-S-T. -R right here. Here it is. What is that? E-M-P? What is the uh, E-M-P? That's, I think, the C-L. Send email of production. Okay. And it's in this program right here. Mm, okay. Now, I, you're going to call a different CL? Yes. Okay, you're going to have to change this program, and this program is live. Mm, okay. So when you do that, you got to make sure the 15-minute job is not running. Mm, okay. And yeah. if you want help, I can help you do it. Um... But you can't, you, um, you don't do it. Oh, yeah. How are we going to do this? Because this is live. I wish we had, I wish we had the um, test library uh, for EDI like we used to have. Yeah, cause I, I, I feel nervous about making a change on a live system. Yeah, but we got to test it for you before you... Okay, let's go into this. Let's go into this. Let me see what that is. E M P R C S T R P T. Is okay. it under okay? Is it under QLBO source? That's what I'm gonna look next. I told you I have trouble finding stuff sometimes, Mark. And then after I do, I go, okay, that made sense. There we go. Okay, so what we, what you can, let's see what we could do here. Ah, no. It, I think it calls a CL from here, right? Do a call. Yeah, it calls this one. Sequence type email. Okay, so then we go inside that one. Hmm. So I'm going to look at that one then. But now. Yeah, because all this is doing is reading the trigger. Did you find it? No, I'm, I'm having, like you, I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble finding it. The, the, the one with the CZ uh, behind it, right? Yeah, let me see if I wrote it down wrong. E-M-C-S-T-R-P-T-C-Z. I found it. I thought I saw the 7, though. Yeah, I did see that. Let's see. Let's see what, what, if I do a work object on that. Uh, here, C S T. Oh. It's in Star iDev. How is it in Star iDev? Oh, I'm signed on as um. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. That's why <laughs> You're on the new system. I didn't know that you're on the new system. I am, but I'm still doing PDM, not through the new system. But I did an object on it, and I found it on Star Eight, and I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, it's in Star Eight Prod. It's a CL. Right. So it is definitely it. a CL.
Here it is. I found it. Uh, let's see, see. Okay. EMP. See what I do? I put not used when it's not used. Okay, but now what is this? Who did this for T.L. Ashford? Must have been Kim. So she started on these? Probably. She created it January 16th. Doesn't tell you anything else. Don't give you who created it? Maybe if you look at the object. Uh, his TL, that's, why T, that's why I can't find the TLA. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. See, like I said, I always put not used or something when I no longer use them. How? How? I don't remember creating this, but... It, it, yeah, but it was created in January. Were you working on this January 16th? You know what? I think Kim got me started on this. And then other things pop up, and I forgot about it. So apparently it's created by me. Cool. So so then she must have commented uh, commented out uh, the original one, the uh, seventh, the one that had the seven behind it. Well, those, I don't know when she, those got commented out. What I did at one time, mm -hmm. Kim originally, for emailing stuff, had two programs all the time. Yeah. And then I noticed that she no longer had two programs all the time. She only had one. So when I would have to make a change to a program that was emailing, I would combine my two and go to only one. Because I liked it better not having two. Yeah, so originally EMC, ST, RPT, CZ. Um, well, that's the one in live. Right. And so I'm going to um, replace it with uh, the TLA. But you can't do that until you get it tested. Right. So best way to test this. <laughs> well, uh, what, I, what I could do is I can do a... I, Here we go. If, if, no, no. Um, hmm. So you, we don't even want to call the CZ... So we want to go to the program before that, probably. The COBOL program, right? It, 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 we just replaced it with... E-M-P-R-C-S-T-R-P-T. But I don't know. What was that? LBL or CBL? Who knows? I think, I think it's uh, LBL. See, I told you you got a better memory than me. Read the T. Okay, here's reading the T. Oh. Okay, I know how you could. Um. Because would you still use this program? Would you still use EMPRCSTRPT? And just change this here to the TLA? That's what I would think. Okay. Um, this program is in Dev and Prod, I think, right? Because it's in Dev. That, that's in Star 8, yeah. I think that one's already in So Star. I think you're okay, Mark. Yeah. The only thing is, you're going to have to call this program somehow. You can't go through the um, EDI 15-minute job. 
what if I what if I just do a, a call statement from type in the call statement from the command line? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I feed into it will will uh, trigger this. Because the production program, all by itself, is going to make the trigger. So you don't even need to test that. Right. It's the 15-minute job. You've got to make it look like it's running, which it's already working, and it goes to this program. So I better write, you know what, I better write these down. So just so I can remember, because there's so, stuff going on here. So... EMP, I'm looking at this one right now, EMPRCSTRPT will call P, uh, EMPRTLACZ, uh, and that's the one where I'm going to create the spool file you yes. use for TL Asher. Correct. Now... I just double checked. This program right up here yep. is in prod. So you could make don't just comment these out obviously in case. Right. Oh boy, I didn't know I did that. Holy cow. So if you look at that. Are you touching something? No. Nope. Oh, I didn't think I was. Maybe I did it. So if you comment these three out and call your um T-L-A-C-Z-1. Yes. That should... That should do it. That should generate it. Because, okay, what you're going to have to make sure is you're over the division with the trigger. Yeah, all you got to do is make sure you're over the division that has the trigger file and the contact file. Well, you, you know, let's see. Um, and see, this has the email in it, but you don't need to pass the email. You would pass everything else, and then you would do the email in the TL8 portion of it. You don't need to go to the contact in this program. You know what, couldn't... Why don't you copy this program, the EMPRC, because you don't need to go to the contact file. Hmm. Okay. Because this is already passing in the email address. So make so make a copy of this COBOL program and call it this uh, one. E M P R T L A R P T. So I'll just so, so I'm so I'm actually going to make a copy of this program. Take out the contact information. And so all you're really going to be doing is reading the trigger. That's really all you got to do is read the trigger. C S T T L A P T. So I make a copy of, of this program. Remove anything to do with uh, the customer contact file. Right. Okay, and okay. Then once you've got your trigger, because this is saying, do you have a trigger? This is all checking if you got a trigger for production. It's going to update the trigger and everything. At, and then where this call is, right here, I don't want the box. This call is make a different call, but you do not need the email. Um, I'm thinking you might not need the type. you got to see what the type is. It's only one character. PR type? Oh, you might need to know what the PR type is. I don't know what the production type is. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, let's go back up here and do... Because is doesn't it depend on what type of production it is? I think, yeah, that... I think it needs to know what type of production it is to know what type of... Um, what you call it to send? You know, is it slitting? Is it sheeting? Is it... And I think that's in... Okay, that's in ET Trigger 2. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, do I got a free screen here? 
Here, wait. Let me move this back down for you so you can see what I'm doing. Y work file, E D E T T R I G star 8 file, F7 equal PR. I'm going to, I want to go to the bottom or near the bottom. No, there is no, there's nothing in ET. Oh. Oh, maybe for double processing, because sums filled in in ET filler two when it's double processing. Hmm. Okay. So I th and that is isn't that where that came from? The PR type. See, he here's the ET fill two, and we're only picking up the first character. Yeah. So it must mean something. You might want to look at the next program to see what it means. Let's see. So it was calling. I'm not going to find it again. It was a CL, right? Yeah. E M C S T R. Okay, so this one, the and type. Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm still with you. I'm just going to um, text Mike Goddard. Uh, unless I'll say Mike, I'll call you back. Uh, I'm on the phone with Christy. Okay. Okay, so it must be an LBL. Yep. I, I I hope we don't have all these different files on the new system. <laughs> all these different libraries on the new system. Okay, let's see. Oh, you wrote this one. Yeah, I, I, that, that, this is the original one. So, let me see what's coming in. Did I pass it up? What is passing in? Yeah. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Okay, see you know to go. Okay, so we got to find out what the TR, TR. My guess is it's the type of production. So that production type, yeah. Temper mill, cut to length, slitting. So you are still going to need that. Yeah. And that's, that's it. I would copy that one program, get rid of the contact information, go to your TLACZ, and then go from there all new. So could I gen so could I run that pro run that uh, COBOL program from the command line or do I ha I don't I don't have to do production right I just need to you need to have a trigger out there that already has production so no you do not need to do any new production you've already got a bunch of triggers out there for production right now will the pro e will the uh, ET process status uh, have already been will that yeah. have a P okay so yeah. Change. And if you're on Star 8 file, hmm. you don't have to worry about the EDI changing that on you. Star 8 file, EDI does not touch. Okay. So you what if you do it the way we're talking, you don't have to worry about the live program at all. Okay. We're going to have to change it to call your EMPRC STRPT program once you finally get everything tested. Yeah. And you're ready to move it out. Then we're going to have to figure out how to change it because that program is in Ferry DIF, I believe. I went. We went so far now that I, I forgot. M R E M. No, P R C S T R P T. Right. This is the one you're going to change to not go to the contact. 
Right. I'll, I'll call it E-M-P-R-C-S-T-T-L-A. Okay. And then... But I, this one is called from... Extend, I think. Yeah. Extend, uh, receive. I think it's a CL. Yeah. This is the live program, which means we're going to have to do this like in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. This one. Yeah. The day you send out your programs, we would go in here. You can actually change it now with comments on it. Right. You know what I mean? Put in put in what we need to do. That's what I usually do. Put comments all around it. When sending out production programs, need to comment out that one and let the new ones go. Right. That that that's after that would be after we tested yeah. uh, my program. So once we once we agree that it's ready to go out to production. We'd have to do this in the middle of the night. Like, what time? Well, I can do it in the middle of the night because you know I don't sleep that much anyway. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, I went to bed. I went to bed early last night. I, I woke up at midnight and I was up for. I was awake for a few hours. Oh well, then I'll let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I did. I did not get any calls last night. But I, I guess maybe I was just. Thinking too much about uh, the logo and you know, making sure that's ready before I come out uh, Wednesday. Oh, you coming? Okay. He, he said I could, uh, but uh, I want to make sure I have everything okay. uh, in place uh, before I do that. So Okay, Mark, you may want to watch the weather and leave a little early because it's supposed to start snowing, I think, around 3. So we're going to have to watch the weather and see what it's doing for your whole ride home. Yeah. Because usually up by you guys, if it comes from the west, you guys get it first. Yes. And you might want to leave before three. You might want to leave at two. And, that, 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 yeah, and that's the other thing, too. Um, hmm. I, you know, I, I was debating whether to come out uh, due to the weather. Now, it depends on how early the... Uh, snow starts. I th I thought it was supposed to start at Wednesday night into Thursday, but hang on, I'm looking right now at my local because I mean Portage is going to be kind of close. They're going to get more snow than I do, but they're going to start probably around when I do or a little after. Because, like I said, it's um here. Let me go to hourly, and if I look at tomorrow. Oh, it only goes to 2 in the morning. Okay, I'll look at daily. Wednesday. Let me click on Wednesday. Okay, this is saying for Wednesday, snow likely in the afternoon, high 36. Chance of snow, 90%. Snowfall around 1 inch. I think I saw on the weather, like the Channel 7 News, Around 3 o'clock is when it's going to start. I usually try to leave between 2.30 and 3 o'clock because I usually get there at 6.30. I get there anywhere from 6 to 6.30. Yeah. So what what time should I should I uh, like leave uh, early in the morning and uh, get there around uh, maybe like 7? You can. I'll be there because the latest I get there is 6.30. Okay. Now, unless there's snow in the morning, but there's not supposed to be, because that would be the only thing slowing me down in the morning, would be the snow. <laughs> but there's not supposed to be snow until the afternoon. And what we'll do is all day, we'll keep checking the weather. Yeah, because uh, the last thing I needed is, it's not going to be a snowstorm, but it's going to be, it's going to be like an inch. Well, no, one inch in the afternoon, but overnight they're going to get three more inches. We are. Right. So we're going to get a lot of snow. That's why I didn't want to go Thursday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I wanted to go Wednesday instead of Thursday. Um. 
but we can keep watching um, the weather for you when you're there. And what if you look at the weather right now, where you're at, when does it say you're going to start getting snow tomorrow? Uh, let me see. Okay, Wednesday. I'd have to. Well, which uh, are you looking at? Are you looking at it on your weather app? Or? Yeah, I look at the weather app. If you go to the weather app and you do the daily, if you click on the day, it'll give you like verbiage about the day. And mine gives it to me about in the day, and then it gives me at night for tomorrow. Let's see. Um. I don't know how to change. Maybe I can change. Let me see if I could change my location. What's your zip code? 60631. Oops, I did 32. Fat fingers. Chicago. Do, 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 do. Okay, in Chicago, I'm going to go to daily. Do, do, do. I'm going to go to Wednesday. See, it's only 60%. You're going to get less than an inch in the afternoon, but it doesn't tell me what time it starts. Oh, you're going to get one to three inches overnight, too. Yes. But you're going to be home by the one to three inches. It's that inch. And like I said, when they did the weather this morning, I watched Channel 7. She said about 3 o'clock. Now, my guess is you might be getting snow over by you about 3 o'clock. So what if you plan on leaving at 2? I was thinking maybe 1 or one thirty. Perfect. Yeah. Leave at 1 or one thirty. You know, you can always go home, which is what I do, and I always tell Kenny, you know, hey, snow's coming. I'm going to head home and finish my day at home. And he always okays me. If I say that, you know, it's coming earlier than I thought and I want to beat the snow home, I'm going to finish my day at home. He he always says okay. Yeah, I mean, I I I mean, I either or, I mean, if I if I take the 294, I I, I can get off um uh, right around here and I could probably stop stop at the rem remaining day of my office cuz I, yeah. I live 10 minutes away from the office. So that that won't matter, but um, that this is all contingent on whether or not I have everything set up. I, so I got to get the right, you know, okay. get the right side. Well, then forget everything I just told you about the production and about the emailing, and get that working so we could go test it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, because I want to. I want to make sure I have this tested because you know opportunities are limited uh, to do the, to to do it this way, and you know we want to get we want to get this fixed. Uh, you know, as soon as possible. Yeah, and I can always help you again with the production stuff if you forget what we went over. Yeah, I mean, uh, so far what I know is I, I make a copy of the of the COBOL program, take out uh, the customer contact, uh, and just uh, think of a tag that already has a trigger uh, from production that was right already, that it's already done that feed that into the program, and uh, I should have... Well, no, you don't even have to feed that into the program. All you have to do... Why don't we work on this after you get the other stuff going, Mark? Yeah, I, I think so, because... I, uh, I will help you get it all set up and everything, okay? And we'll make sure we do all kinds of production. Slitting, sheeting, tempering, whatever we need to do. Why don't we get what you need to do for tomorrow first? You get what you need to do for tomorrow first. Yeah, and we'll work on that tomorrow, and then we'll worry about this other stuff later. Yeah, that that yeah, the, the other stuff we can put on the back burner. Uh, the logo is uh, a bigger fish to fry. Well, at least you know how to how we do the emailing now, so yeah. that helps. No. Yes, I, I can look at yeah, I can look at uh, the setup uh, on the invoice. Um, right, right, and, uh, and just apply the same technique uh, in, in my T.L. Ashford program. Yes. Or form, T.L. Ashford form. Yeah, I knew what you meant. Yeah. <laughs> I knew what you meant. Yeah. No, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm just glad I could help you. I'm glad I could help you.
I, 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 you know, I, I, it's very much appreciated. Um, well, but you know, I'd like, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to be, uh, I'd like to be at a level where I'm really comfortable uh, working with this and know, knowing what to do. You know what, Mark? It's brand new to you. So if we could help each other to get both of us kind of knowing what's going on, you more than me, but <laughs> at least I can help a little bit because you're always helping me. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, you know, I mean, I I think by, by you watching the videos, you you, you pretty much uh, understand what's going on. It, it, it's it's the uh, you it's, know it's it's the CL part where you create you do your overwrite print file. That's where you got to begin to make your connection to um, TL Ashford um, is how you set up your overwrite print file. Well, and the other thing I want. You got to tell me all Kim's secrets. Oh, you use this letter if it's that, and you do this, and you do that. Those are all secrets. Right. She puts. I mean, she. Well, we'll go over that next week because I'm coming up next week. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna cover that uh, next Wednesday. Okay. So tomorrow, though, let's concentrate on the loads. See what we could do with reducing the size of the picture, the image. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Let's do that. We got a plan, and we're going to beat the snow home tomorrow, even if we have to leave at 1 o'clock and finish our day somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but, yeah, the main thing is me getting this all set up uh, for tomorrow. Yes, yes. Okay, you concentrate on that, and we will work on the other part of it as soon as we know what's going on with the Loadmasters. I'll help you with production if we need to go back through anything. Definitely. Okay. Sorry, I took up so much of your time. No, no. Uh, it, it, it was very helpful because I, 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 I would have been still scrambling to look through the end coil program and figuring out where to put it. But you opened, you know, you you uh, opened up uh, or you shed some light on where it's currently being uh, generated from, and it's from uh, the, from the EDI program, which I was not fully aware of. So well, now you do. Yes. I I'm glad I can help you. I feel so good, Mark, because I'm always bugging you. Now when I bug you, I won't feel so guilty. <laughs> no, and, and, uh, you know, we're here to help each other out. Yes, we are. Yeah. Okay. All right, sounds good. Okay, I will see you tomorrow then. I will be there by 6.30, so whatever time you get there. Yes, and, you know, and if for any reason, uh, you know, for any reason I can't make it, uh, I will okay. email you or text you or, you know, slash yeah. you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. But I'm going either way, so yeah. don't worry if you don't make it. I'm going to go either way. Yeah, but I, I definitely would want to be there tomorrow because we can we can see how much well, different, how, how, how much of a difference it makes to... Reduce the size before you import it into. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, I, I know how to move it from, uh, you know, from uh, box to, uh, like I, I would do it to box, move it from box to my desk, not move it, but copy it to uh, my desktop. And then once I make the changes, uh, I, I, I already mapped uh, the drive to where uh, the logos are stored on um the uh, i series uh, monitor. What what is it called? Uh, the i uh, i series navigator. The, the logos are stored stored in the spurt are stored in a certain spot. So I already got okay. to drive map to it, so I can just copy and paste it into there. Okay, and you're going to have to show me where those are at. But first thing we got to do is test your load master, and yeah. if we don't get to that. Tomorrow, you could show me that next week, okay? Yes. Because the main thing tomorrow is printing your load master, testing yeah. that part. Yeah, because I, I think you know Kenny wants to you know, get this out of the way as soon as possible, and I yeah. want to get it out of the way as soon as possible. And it's today I have to devote my time to setting up the uh, form. Okay. All right. You go do right. that, and I will leave you alone the whole rest of the day. <laughs> Okay, sounds good. Okay, bye. All right, bye bye. Hi, sweetie. Do you guys want to go outside? Come on. No, no, no. No, no, no. Shiva, let's go out. Let's go out. Let's go out. No, 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 no. Come on, Shiva. Come on, Shiva. Come on, Shiva. Come on. Ah, ah, ah. Go outside. Go outside. Go outside. Twist. Outside. Outside.
girl, Shiva. Good girl, Shiva. Did you get it all cleaned up, Twizzy? Thing.
could have swore. Let me copy this. Hey, 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 what's going on? Say, Sheba, be nice. They don't need to know the truth. But with this USP seal, I know the whole truth about what's in my Nature Made gummies. Nature Made has the first gummy verified by USP for purity and potency. Only 22 likes? What we decide on the flyers again? Uh, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more car insurance. I think we're going to swap over to over 75 years of savings and service. Oh, we're just going to swap over. Yep. Pump the brakes on this, swap it over to that. Pump the brakes and uh, swap over. That's right. What instead of all these that I've already got? What are we going to do with these? Keep it in your desk. Um, save it for next time. Geico. Over 75 years of savings and service. New uh, snacks, cold and flu, all in one. Fight. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Sword for all people. Cough. Satisfaction. pressure. Chest can be sent to the These will be fine. They all in one. Did you really get the caps lock? Mucinex, cold and flu, all in one. Cheerio, do I look like a child to you? I bet Cheerios are heart healthy and can help lower cholesterol. That's why we introduced heart shapes. Get it? Mm. Did you just mm? No. I'm pretty sure I heard a mmm. My drugs be cut can help burn calories and double the weight loss results. So you can... Effective weight loss. You have goals. We'll help you reach them. Hydroxy Cut can help burn calories plus a science backed key ingredient to lose weight so you can. Powerful weight loss. You have goals. We'll help you reach them. Looking to repair dry, damaged hair without weighing it down? Try Pantene Daily Moisture Renewal Conditioner. This color-safe formula uses smart conditioners to micro-target damage, helping to repair hair without weighing it down. Try Pantene. Welcome back, everyone. We have seen feather trim all over the runway to the red carpet. Now, this trend is everywhere, and it is not going anywhere anytime. So, Orla is here to show us how we can elevate our outfits with some fluff and some frills, and it's removable. It's removable. That's the thing that I'm so excited about. You don't have to make it removable. I'll kind of talk you through both options. But the benefit of it being removable is that you really get a lot of bang for your buck with each piece. I found this jacket at Salvation Army. By the way, it's a Giorgio Armani jacket I found at the thrift store. So you can find amazing pieces. You just got to hunt. And I added on this detail, which makes it really fun. But it's such a great jacket that maybe the time's going to come down the road where I want it to be a basic. And I have that. So it makes it makes it right off. Yeah, it's super functional. Okay, so we have the garment mm -hmm. that, that we want to put the fluffy frill on. Yes. We also need to get this sort of, what is this called? Snap tape. Snap tape. It's yeah. not really tape. It's actually just snaps. It, yeah, the reason it's called snap tape is because this is like a, this itself is like a tape. It's like a cotton twill. And it has to snap in set. So as opposed to you hand sewing in, both sides of each snap, it comes on a tape, on a trim, okay. which can then be applied. So for example, I put it here on the cuff on the inside of the jacket, so you can see this really beautiful dark blue which ties in, but the entire thing is removable because it's all on the snap tape. So if I want, oh, I just take it off. That's amazing. How fun is that? That is so fun. I mean, you could even just wear it as a bracelet. I mean, why not? I'm not so good I don't know. There's so many things down. There's so many things. Okay. The bread for your hair. Okay. Yeah. We have a snap tape. We have our jacket. You can put this on anything. You've got yeah. a t-shirt over there. Exactly. Show sure everyone how to do it on a really cool jacket that we have here. Yeah. So now what do we do? We also have our fake ostrich. We ha Yeah. We have both better trim. You can find this online. You can find this at local fabric stores. You just want to pick a color that's going to work with your garment. Think about kind of what piece you're working with. And one mention I will make about the type of garment is you really want to make sure it's not something that has to stretch to get on your body. So, for example, th this T-shirt is a stretched T-shirt, but the hem doesn't need to stretch, so it's okay to apply it there. The snap tape and the feather will prevent any stretch from happening once it's applied. Okay. So don't do it on a tight T-shirt where you got to stretch it. It's going to pop. Or so like just think about jeans at the bottom. A skinny jean, exactly. So okay. just think about location. All right. All right, so first thing you want to do is you would take your snap tape, take the long amount that you got, and you're going to line it up on the inside to figure out how long you need it. So you basically are just going to work your fingers around like this, keeping it flat in order to decide. 
Once you get to the You're end, to flip it inside out. No, and Debbie, you know what's interesting that I actually learned? Originally, when I thought to do this, I took my sleeve and I flipped it inside out because obviously sure. it's easier access here, right? You know how when you think about running a track, the outer lane is bigger than the inner lane? Well, that happens like this. If I apply this, then when I flip it inside out, it actually gets smaller. And you end up with these little bubbles of excess fabric. So you want to measure it and glue it regularly like okay. this. So I've already cut this piece. So what I would do is I would just apply a nice thin amount of the one side of my snap tape. Now, when you buy the snap tape, it comes with a male and a female side. Obviously, that's how it snaps together. You want to pick which side you want to be on the inside. We're just going to work our way around a little bit of fabric glue. Does it only come in white? No, white, black. You can usually find a lot of colors That's online. Most fabric stores, though, will only have white and black. Okay. So I've done this one. You can see it's all the way on the inside here, already all the way around. Okay. The other side, the other side is here. What I'm going to do is I took that piece. You're going to go on the back side of your fabric. You're going to apply a thin line of glue and just drop it like this. Just lay it on. And you can get all of this stuff <laughs> Exactly. One stop shopping. Now, two rows of feathers is the absolute least you want to do. I have three on this one here. Oh, it's, what, it really makes it look far more yeah. luxurious when you layer it. Yeah. See, okay. that's, that's one. Exactly. So, if you can do enough, think about, measure how much you need, and then multiply it by at least two, if not three. Now, when you snap it on, we're going to go just like this. Snap. Just pop it into place. And you just keep working your way around snap after snap after snap. And the cool thing about it, too, is if you really wanted to get super versatile, is you could actually buy the other side of the snap tape. So, for example, let's say I had extra of this. I could then add a completely different trim. And this jacket could continue to convert for me. Take this sleeve off, put something else on. That. I mean, that really. So, so fun. You really get a lot out and of it. And you could do it here, too, right? Yeah. Well, Debbie, we were talking about that. When you think about your location, think about all sorts of areas. You could put it right here. Thank you. Right here under the blazer cuff so it sticks oh, out. I love that. Anywhere that it can be hidden on the back. And otherwise, you're good to go. And how will we clean this? Obviously, you're not throwing in the washing machine. No. So I would spot clean the garment whenever possible. But with feathers, you actually want to use mild soap and water. Wash them like hair. Really? Yeah. Dunk them to get all the soap out. And then a cold blow dryer. Do not use heat. Cold blow dryer just to make sure that they stay kind of frilly. And then you're good to go. I love to know that. I had no idea because I was sure yeah. like this. And the poor thing's never been done. <laughs> is delicious and full of natural vitamin C to support your immune system. And that's nothing to sneeze at or cough at for that matter. Simply orange. Honestly simple. My body is truly powerful. I have the power to lower my blood sugar in A1C. Because I can still make my own insulin. And Tulicity activates my body to release it like it's supposed to. Trulicity is for people with type 2 diabetes. It's not insulin. I take it once a week. It starts acting in my body from the first dose. Trulicity isn't for people with type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis. Don't take Trulicity if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Trulicity and call your doctor right away. If you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, or severe stomach pain, serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Taking Trulicity with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases low blood sugar risk. Side effects include nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, belly pain, and decreased appetite, which lead to dehydration and may worsen kidney problems. I have it within me to lower my A1C. Ask your doctor about Trulicity. Well, this is overwhelming. Where to start? Listen to celebrity decorators with their million-dollar budgets and enormous staff? That's realistic. 
or just step into a store. Oh, no, there's a better way. You've skimmed catalogs, you've browsed through blogs, you know what you like when you see it. Artful contemporary, Scandinavian minimalism, organic modern. You know what you want, overstocks where you find it. Now let's get to work. A sofa, a floor lamp, an area rug. Never forget the area rug. Everything you need with free shipping every day. Easy, right? Getting it done with overstock, where quality costs less. As a doctor, I agree with the easy guidance. I recommend topical pain relievers first, like Salon Pass Patch Large. It's powerful, FDA approved to relieve moderate pain, yet not addictive and gentle on the body. Salon Pass, it's good medicine. Ashley Holstor's President's Day sale is going on now. Get up to 30% off. And through Thursday, shop on beatable doorbuster deals. Or get 0% interest for six whole years. Ashley Home Store. This is home. <laughs> Bear Carbono, the company who invented car vending machines and buying a car 100% online. Now we've created a brand new way for you to sell your car. Whether it's a year old or a few years old, we want to buy your car. So go to Carvana and enter your license plate, answer a few questions, and our techno wizardry calculates your car's value and gives you a real offer in seconds. When you're ready, we'll come to you, pay you on the spot, and pick up your car. That's it. So ditch the old way of selling your car and say hello to the new way at Carvana. Carl and Alan have a lot in common. They're staying at the same hotel, with the same outdoor space, the same pool, the same hotel experience. But there's one big difference, the price. You see, Carl found the hotel on his usual website, whereas Alan used Travago to scan hotel deals from the major booking sites and save $30 a night. Carl, try Travago next time. Hotel, Travago. Even in the dead of winter, the hunt continues. For wolves, the harshest conditions can work to their advantage in the pursuit of prey. Wolves have an innate desire for meat, just like dogs, your dog. Satisfying a dog's desire for meat starts with blue wilderness. It's a grain-free food that's made with more of the meat dogs love. Blue wilderness. Because wolves and dogs live for the hunt. Thursday on Home and Family, Emily Hutchinson bakes up adorable box of chocolate cookies. And Paige and Larissa create the perfect Valentine's treat for your dog. Welcome back, everyone. And you know our next guest from the movie, Big, one of my all-time favorites. He's here today making a cherry ricotta dessert, which is featured in his new show, From Scratch, Please welcome David Moscow. Welcome, David. Hello. Hello. Thanks for being here. Very cool. Debbie, Maria, Orlin are going to sit there and wait for us to, uh, to make this magic. Now, here's the yeah. thing. Cooking from scratch is something that, you, that really kind of takes you back to your childhood summers, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I, so I grew up in New York, but my mom's family is all in Utah, Montana. Okay. So they would ship me out and drop me off, and I'd be there with my cousins running around, and we'd fish and they'd oh. stick us in the <coughs> That's, uh, that was our life, you know, until I started acting. I got a part in the movie big, and that kind of, like, that life kind of disappeared. Um, and then when I had a kid, I realized it was something that I missed. That, like, where, went, where did all the apple picking and strawberry <laughs> picking and fishing go, right? So I get my meat wrapped in plastic and figure out, like, how actually, how you could do it, how I could get closer to the food that I was eating. Which is why the show, From Scratch, is so perfect for you. I mean, it's, this is fantastic. This recipe is coming from that show. It's a, like I mentioned, a cherry ricotta dessert that's delicious. You learned how to make this when you were in Sardinia. Go with this. Yes. Um, wow. So we went into the mountains to this sort of hermit who lives in a cave in the mountains. Wow. He taught me how to make ricotta. So ricotta can be goat milk or it can be cow's milk. Correct. You goat milk is too okay. Yeah, right. I didn't know it either, Maria. Very <laughs> It's good to go. It's good to go. So we're going to start with that. So go through. And, and just flavor-wise, how does that help this dish? How does it change it? I mean, I mean look, I, I think goat's milk, if you like a little more tang, if you like something a little yeah. special, then use goat's milk. Okay. If you're kind of nervous around, you know, what you're taking in and you just want the sweetness of it all to come out later, yeah. then regular milk is fine. Okay. But you do half as much cream in here, so you put in whatever, a cup of milk and then a half a cup of cream. And, and, uh, and if you're allergic to cow's milk, yeah. you generally won't be allergic to goat milk and sheep milk. That's important to say. Because I sometimes have allergies to milk, and when I'm in Greece, 
Yeah, no problem at all. Gotcha. Now, what are we adding in here? And tell everybody why again. I know you're trying to make it cool. cool. Right. So this so, is this is vinegar. Okay. In Sardinia, we actually used goat rennet, which comes from the stomach of a baby goat. And I don't know that wasn't very exciting to use here. So instead, you, <laughs> you can use vinegar. It's a good choice, man. <laughs> I like that choice. You know, while we're talking about this, I'd love to show everyone at home exactly what you were talking about and how you actually made this ricotta cheese while you were in Sardinia. It's really fascinating. Take a look. They want to hurt the goal. They want to harm the goal. But watching Tonino, Dan again, to get the milk, gave me confidence that maybe I could do it. Sparkling. Good. So we set a strainer over a bowl and we line it with cheese balls. You have to warm the milk to about 200. Woo -hoo. Come on, We make this one wheel of goat cheese. And the remaining way curds are then turned into Okay, <laughs> All right, yeah, thank you. Thank you for all your help. Perfect. Wow, that is legit. It's amazing. Fantastic. All right, so uh, so now, Georgia, so you got this. This is coming up. Takes a little bit of time, right? right. About a minute or a couple minutes right. before it happens. Eventually, we get to this. Yes, and, and, oh, no. and you can see this is curdled now. You can start to see it coming up on the top. And then, I don't know if you ever see in the bottom of your ricotta, there's that milky yellow thing. Yeah. Oh, that's on the bottom of this, but we'll, I'm okay. How are you? I'm uh, making it. Okay, that don't sound good. Um, my father passed with Bearden last week. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. I am really sorry. Are you okay? One day at a time. Some days are good, some days are not. But... Well, you knew my dad passed the beginning of Jan January, right? No. Yeah, so I know exactly what you're going through. Oh, wow. Yes, I'm so sorry. I definitely know what you're going through. Yeah. How's your daughter? I think because we both realized how hard it was on him, we're okay. We miss him. But you know how, you know what I mean? He's He's better off. Yeah. You know, and when we talk about it, we keep saying he's with our mom now, my mom now. You know, and that helps. How about your kids? How are they taking it? My little one is, if she doesn't know where I am, she's like, where'd you go? You, you didn't tell me you were leaving. I said, yeah. you were in the shower. I went to get something to eat. Well, you could have yelled out to me. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Yeah, 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 because how old is your youngest? Eleven. Okay, when my mom passed, my daughter was six. She was like that. She thought all of a sudden everybody was going to be gone. Mm -hmm. You know. Because yeah, I usually joke with her. I said I ran away. She said, you can't run away. Granddaddy already left me. And I said, no, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. So, it was, I don't know, it's still kind of rough. Because like, I still go to my, my parents' house every day. And it's just the hospital bed is gone. And it's just... Yeah. I'm trying to deal with it all, it's all. Yeah. I definitely know what you're saying. Well, my brothers were here and they asked me if there's anything I wanted them to do. I said, first thing you got to do is remove my dad's chair from my front room. It's got to, I can't have it here no more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I know what you mean, but 
you st I still get up and look in there thinking I'm going to see him. Because you know he was living with us the last year. Yeah, he lived with you. For, yeah, he moved in with you. He, he grumbled, but he did move in with yes, you. Yes, he that. did move in. And he realized he he would have been in a nursing home if he didn't move in. You know what I mean? And he realized that at the end. Yeah. So, but no, I'm... But I have a question, young lady, because it, it threw Kevin off, and I don't know why it did it either. The production that production screen where I can see what's ready to be pre-billed? Yeah. There's a tag that if I do an F10, it does not show up to be billed because there's this, there's a cut that's not tagged in, but it's showing that it's already skidded. It's weird looking. Okay, hang on tag. one second. How about if we start with, give me the tag number. I want to look up the tag first. It's tag 135899. I bet um the, pl the office there was probably very lost without you. I came back and it was just papers everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know what to do. We didn't know who to call. Yeah, you are definitely... Definitely, we're missed. Okay, um, there is a skid on the 48 inch that yes. is not skidded. It's not skidded, but when you look at um, the office production report, that one where I can see what needs to be tagged in or what needs to be pre built. But it can't be pre built till it's skidded. Yeah, I know. But okay, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. It's not showing because usually when it's not, it's missing a skid. It'll, it'll show that. What words does it say? It'll show. Oops! What happened to my screen? What's my screen doing? Funny? Okay, it says slit skids. Oh, yeah. But usually, if it's like not, if it, what happened to my screen? It is not acting right. Right. Okay, F ten. F ten. Yeah, it's not there. Well, if it is not skidded at the time of production either. I thought maybe they skidded it and then they deleted it. No, see, I don't know what they did. Because usually if it's missing a skid, if it's not ready to be pre-built, it'll just say slit. But this has slit skids, which would mean that it's ready, but it's not ready. Yeah, I know. Right. And when I what I did after that was I did a display and I did F10, F10, F10. Mm -hmm. And it does not have a skid number because see what happens. The very first time you skid it, it throws a skid number on it. Oh, I see what you're saying. And I thought like maybe. To, like they had to delete it and redo it. Yeah, but it doesn't have a skid number. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I don't know what happened with this one. I know. So I don't... I thought maybe they skidded it and then deleted a skid. See, this was done on Saturday, so that's kind of what's freaking me out, because I don't know what they did on Saturday. Okay, I see 135941 only says skids, so let's see if I... Oh, that guy's active online. Oh, yeah. You sure maybe it don't? Oh, here's one. Let's see. Is this one active online? I'm trying to find another one that just says slit. F10, oh, F10, no, F10. Oh, this one doesn't have anything. Why is this one like that? Um, Can you look at 135677? Seven, seven. It says... On one of them, it's got, it's, it's on there twice. Different issues, sorry. It threw me off. It's okay, but the a, second one. See, why is it in there twice? The second one doesn't have any weight. Yeah. Okay, let me look at the second one first.
That is 56509. 56509. Why does the PT say S and D? What is the difference? What's PT for? I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't have four. D is deselect tag. S is split. So they selected it and then they unselected Oh, I think Kenny keeps production when they deselect it. And then they give you a new one. So the second one you would ignore. Because the okay. tag was selected and then deselected. So you'd only worry about the first one. And let me see something. If I say F10 on that guy, neither one shows. So that's why you wouldn't have seen that one. Okay. And 135899 does not show, meaning you're ready for production billing. When you do an F10 to show not production build, that one that doesn't have a skid doesn't show that it's ready for production billing. I think... Well, why does it say slid, slit skids? Usually slit skids means it's completely finished. I think it means it's been started skidding because the very first one that just says slit and doesn't say skids, mm -hmm. that guy's on the line. I think, oh. I'm thinking as soon as they start skidding it, it might get skids on it. Because the next one that just says slit is, is a deselect. Wait a minute, here's another one that just says skids, and it's a deselect, doesn't say skids. I think as soon as they start skidding it, it gets a skid, the word skids. Oh, I have to just kind of. So what you need, how do you, how can you do, I, I got out and went back in. No. Um, how can I figure out, okay, I might know, I might know. 135899. Scale weight. We had something I could have swore. Class users received weight total footage. Okay, the scale weight on that is 686. If I do a shift F14, uh, shift F, no, 14 would be F2. It's not changing it. That's not working. What if I do that first? Oh, that just does it for the totals. Okay. And that's changing totals. Active, inactive. Show not production build. Show all. How can you know it's not been production build? I don't think we have a... Uh, I don't think we have a way for you to see that you haven't production build it. How can we? Because it's not skidded. Yeah, it's not skidded. Because you would no, think fifteen. No, wait. Am I in? Yeah, I'm in office. I keep having to go back out because I want to start from the beginning. You would think if I did the F10. Tag 135899 would show, but it would let you know that you can't do production billing because it's not all skidded. You got to get that guy skidded. But there's no way to know you didn't do production billing on it. I just don't understand what they did because it looks like they started on Saturday. They skidded one uh, half of one of the 48 right. yesterday and the other one's still sitting not tagged. I don't know what they're doing back there. As soon as they skid it, then you're going to be good to go. Yeah. 
and you'll be able to do your production billing. No idea what they've done with this. Because Kevin was like, how can I tell? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> That's a weird one to me. I don't know what that... I know there's nothing really telling you, hey, this needs skidding. Because you, well, I take that back because I would, I know when it gets close to inventory time, I run that report. Right, but that's um, the only way I know. That's the only way, that's the only other way to, to do that then. Unless you, I mean, does this happen that often? Um. I'd be curious, run that report, let's see if that skid, that tag shows up. Oh, okay, hold on. And see if there are any others, especially if they're old. You know, not today production. <coughs> that one is showing on there, and then everything else is from today. But it is showing on there. And everything else is today? Today, mm-hmm. So probably doesn't happen that often where you've ever thought, hey, i got to have a way to know if we haven't skidded everything. Unless you just try, maybe try and get in the habit twice a month, maybe, or once a week running that report. Well, I used to do that because they got so bad in the back, but they kind of... They got better. Got better. And I, I slacked off on doing it because I was doing it like once a week at one point. Just I'll like, bet you it's somebody on Saturday just forgot to do it. And why the guy that skidded the one yesterday didn't skid them both. I don't know. It's weird. I know. When, they, when they're on that screen, because I don't look at that screen too often, when they're doing, when they're skidding, when they're